seem to be a bit more of a logical decision as we talk to the mayors mm. of Weymouth and Braintree, it becomes um, you know, more obvious one way or the other the effects of a four-year term are generally on the plus side, no question, for, for folks to be able to see things through. A lot in the works for you right now. Is there anything that you haven't yet begun that you look forward to putting on this list of downtown and business development and school construction, etc.? Well, there's, there's always there's always more to do with you know uh, it, with my with my background. Obviously, uh, I've been park commission for 12 years. Um, you know, I, I see you know that that 10 million dollar um, fund that we've negotiated on improvements outside of Quincy Center, and the U.S. doing uh, gateway improvements to our city, public improvements to, to park and public space enhancements. Uh, that excites me. Uh, because the look of the city is so important to our residents, but also as we focus on expanding the visitor center of downtown, I think it's important that uh, you know, the, the gateways look good and uh, we have good signage throughout the city. Sometimes we, we forget if you, once in a while I'm looking out my window and I see the car going the wrong way in front of City Hall, it amazes me they don't get into an accident, they get through it somehow. But you know, we take it for granted getting around our city and they navigate, but uh, we, we need a, a lot of improvement. Uh, I think in beauty and also in signage um, for those visitors. I really want to, uh, and I hope this next term with the school committee that we can delve into those educational issues a little more deeply. I've spent uh, obviously a lot of time trying to sustain what we have based on the economy we've been in, based on the funding and revenues we have. We've spent time on Quincy High, on Central, and we have work to do on Sterling. Um, Sterling Middle School, we have put in our letters of expressive interest with SBA. And uh, we've had some discussions, uh, the superintendent and I, on how we're going to proceed with that. It's a structurally solid building, but it's an old sneaker that needs some, needs some attention. And at the end of the day, we have 52 buildings that you know, we the public assets that we have to continue to maintain the best, best way we can. But I look forward to the, uh, I, you know, uh, the operation side. I think things are going well. We've identified uh, going forward uh, how we're going to deal with budget issues and we reduce those. Um, structural deficits that we that we talked about early on, with the exception of the snow and ice, which remains, though we've incrementally increased the budget to a million dollars now. Um, you know that's the last one to deal with. But as we deal with those operational issues, uh, I, I want to spend a little more time uh, with the superintendent, with the principals. Uh, we have a public uh, a school improvement plan in every school. I really want to work those school improvement plans, and it's not just the building; it's the culture of the building. It's, uh, it's those educational opportunities uh, and the uniqueness of each of the needs of some of those neighborhoods we have to deal with. And I certainly want to delve into that a little more. Um, at least according to reports in the Patriot Ledger, we have seen a huge <laughs> uptick up front around uh, both laws in, in long time Quincy Center T stations. And not just in the stations, but in the neighborhoods around the stations. What are you? directing the chief of police to do, or what is he telling you he is going to do to get a handle on this? Because as far as I can see, over and over and over again, the same sorts of issues, almost in an escalating pattern over the past six, eight, 12 months. Uh, I don't know if I agree with uh, all of that position, okay. but uh, you know, the chief and I are talking on a regular basis, uh, some of his command staff. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we had five patrol members that, uh, you know, it's concerned. I mean, the crime step is cyclical, and if you do things, you look at trends over time. I don't like to necessarily react to six months or eight months, though the police department ought to react. But as far as adjusting resources in time, we kind of look at trends, whether that's in the school budget, whether that's in the police side. And we all know, uh, studies show that, um, you know, drugs contribute greatly to all these crimes, whether it's a a robbery, whether it's a break in entering. So we've, we've been working hard to get at the root of that in, in our city, and it's, there's, there's nobody exempt from this issue. I remember Bill Delahunt, when he was DA, telling me many times uh, years ago that per capita drug use is higher in, in the wealthy suburbs than they are in the urban areas. You know, so it was an interesting stat. So for anyone to suggest that they don't have a drug problem in the community, it's great. We've acknowledged it. We've put together a, a tremendous team and a task force. But in addition, working the enforcement side. You know, adding the canines to our city, 
double the size of the drug unit, adding two offices to go into with the DEA and work with the DEA as well as the surrounding communities on more of a collaborative effort and how we, how we deal with some of this uh, drug arrests are up dramatically. Uh, we are making a difference in that area uh, through education, through enforcement. The treatment side of things is a long way to go, but I'm not so sure that should be resting on the municipalities that, um, as opposed to the, the state and federal government involvement. Um, but as these things occur, uh, for example, I know last year when we had an issue with that person, the mugging around the Walson Center, we put community meetings together, we get people out, get the police out, letting people know what they should do, what they should be looking for. Um, we added patrols, we added uh, folks undercover, some, some on overtime shifts, some on regular shifts, uh, and uh, that's, that's how they react. And, and I think it's a good way. And, and it's funny when you, uh, you know, with the devices today, uh, people walking down, you'll see people walking down a dark street doing this all the way down, pack up an invitation, not knowing what your surroundings are. So this public education that has to go along with it as well. But I think we've, uh, we've calmed the police department down dramatically with the change of leadership. We're not seeing the stories in the ledger anymore about the battles within the department. We've got a department focused on crime prevention, on enforcement, and uh, I think they're doing a pretty good job with the resources they have. We have provided them new weapons, we've provided them new cruises. Of course, the, the canines and the additional manpower, I think, will all be, be of help to some of those issues you just mentioned. You spoke of um, coordination with surrounding communities on, on drug enforcement issues. Um, by all accounts, the, the recycling, um, the regionalized or tri-town approach to recycling has been um, very successful and beneficial to all three communities. Are there other areas of municipal governance, of service purchase, or of something like issue-oriented issues like drugs, education, awareness that you're working on with the mayors or the other communities or would like to begin with? We, uh, we meet on a regular basis, uh, we being the mayors of the three communities, Sue Kay and Weymouth and Joe Sullivan and Branchy. We talk about a number of challenges and issues. And by the way, I meet on a regular basis with two other mayors groups, um, Metro Mayors, which is 13 mayors around the Boston area, and then the Mass Municipal Association has the Mass Mayors Group, statewide mayors group that from time, and I don't get to all of them. Um, there's a lot going on in my own city, but uh, we get to a number of those meetings and share ideas. But specifically dealing with uh, Mayor Kay and Mayor Sullivan, obviously we're, we were successful with the trash collection. I think it was a, um, you know, we're way ahead of the curve too. When you, when you look at the state, what they've been encouraging communities to do, you know, we did that three years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's a collaboration that has worked well for all three communities. And we're always looking for other ways to do that. As far as the drugs you mentioned, uh, Weymouth has adopted our model on putting a task force together and doing the programs that we've done. Uh, we've gotten um, you know some some high marks from state officials at the Department of Public Health on how we're addressing the issues, and they've rewarded us with grants with working with Impact Quincy. Um, there are other times when. Branch and Weymouth are just a little too small, you know, as far as job sharing, there's talk of, of a veterans service director maybe sharing, well, we're just a little too big for that, that type of uh, approach for us. But overall, we continue to work with them. Um, you know, I had a recent visit with Mayor Menino uh, about six weeks ago in his office, and then again last week out to talk about some of those issues relating to Moon Island, Long Island, and how we could work better uh, together as communities. Of course, um, I'm sure he doesn't think too much about Long Island and Moon Island, like we think about it, because they're right, right by the Squam section of our city. But uh, we had a good meeting, and uh, we we got some help from him in some areas. And so I think it's important to continue that dialogue with all the communities, particularly those ones that are about us. So we continue to work together. But you don't see any immediate areas where a consolidated approach to something um, would save all the taxpayers and all three money, or or might streamline or make something more efficient. I don't have any new announcements, no, not beyond the road. Whenever we talk about uh, growth in the city, it all, often centers on uh, the Streetworks project. Uh, you've mentioned that, you've mentioned things that are going on down the shipyard and some of the companies that have either come here or, or altered their numbers here. Is there an area where you see untapped potential to give the city a, a even better tax base or a, a new revenue stream? Um, not really. I, mean, no. I talked about running in 07, I talked about three areas. It was Crown Colony, Shipyard, and Quincy Center. It was those, those are three areas we really have to spend some time on. That's where development ought to occur. 
That's not to say we ignore those business districts with Norfolk Downs or Kundi Center. I mean, we've invested some serious federal monies in the Brewers Corner area, Copeland and Water, and well, we've seen some resurgence in some local businesses there. I think it's important we do that, whether it's Kundi Point and Washington Street or some of those other business districts I described. Um, you know, it's, it's jobs, 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 and uh, we're working all areas to, to, to continue to uh, create an atmosphere of, uh, so we, we can add jobs to the roles and put our families back to work here in Quincy. And, uh, you know, we're, we're also going to line, down the line of we know that the shipyard location has some challenges on, on the Braintree side. That intersection of East West Howard and Quincy Avenue needs to be realigned, needs to be changed. We need, we're working with Cork now for them to give us some land to do that. We have an engineering company that's got 25% design of that intersection because anything that happens at the end is going to result in a problem at that yard. And that's another area we're working with, actually, Joe Sullivan. Uh, it affects both communities. Uh, the yard is partially in Braintree, and of course the intersection affects both communities. Uh, so we're working with, with them on that. That makes the shipyard more valuable if we get some of those infrastructure things done. Um, you know, North Quincy, we're, we're in uh, the phase about to do the land takings for the, uh, the gas station and the Walgreens so that we can reconstruct that intersection as, we're, as we've gone through that process with Mass DOT which will help that whole area of State Street South and the North Quincy Business District area and perhaps could lead to further development of the T parking lot, which was suggested a few years back. So uh, we continue to work all the angles we possibly can while sustaining what we have and you know, dealing with some of these infrastructure improvements while living within our means. What effect is all of this short-term having on homeowners and, and residents in terms of what they pay for services, their tax rates, the, the service they see in terms of those streets or sidewalks, um, trees, unification. How do you rate where we are now and what do you hear from people on the plus or minus side? Well, I'm, uh, people generally, when I went out there, um, have been very positive about what's going on in Quincy. Then there's always that, not always, but there commonly is that personal issue, whether it's the sidewalk is heaved in front of their house, or they want a new tree, or they want that limb trimmed away from their home. Um, so there's always going to be those issues. And uh, from the constituent services side and the years of government, we've never caught up in sidewalks, and we've never caught up in tree issues, whether it's having it taken down or having a new one put in. So those will always be challenges, but when I look at the last few years, we've restructured how we do snow removal. We've, we're doing it more efficiently at a better cost for the taxpayer. How did that turn out? At end of, end of last year, the by the inch versus the flat rate, did we save any money on the, analysis the I got, day? Yeah, the, the analysis I got from my coffee was that uh, for those routes we put out to bid, it was 10% cheaper and there was other routes that we did either by other contractors or city people doing it. So it has been successful. Uh, but even more importantly to me is, you know, you very seldom you get compliments in this business. I understand that's how it goes. And then frequently you get criticism. Uh, last year we got email after email of compliments on the snow removal, uh, which was shocking to me because for someone to take the time, uh, and that's meaningful, a number of folks that had the usual problems, the same problem they'd have to call on, whether it's a dead end or something was forgotten. Uh, we've, we've got uh, high marks from folks. I'm not saying it was perfect, but certainly the overall uh, feeling last year was it was very good. Um, is the program expanded this year or repeated? or like? Repeating what we had last year, which was uh, the two companies, Riley and Norton, will be doing those same areas. And the accountability part is, is tremendous with that, because you're not moving people around. It's the same company, the same driver. They've learned the routes, they know what they have to do, and they, and they learn the intricacies of the neighborhood. They get to know some of the people, and, and they know they're going to come out and move their car, can you help us here? And, and I think it works well, it provides a, a higher level of service in a time when uh, cities and towns are cutting services. Uh, you know, and last two years we've held the property, we've brought up taxes, we've held the property taxes two years in a row on the average single family tax bill. I think that's uh, unheard of in Massachusetts, there may be three or four other communities that have done it, but. Um, Certainly cities our size did not do it.